Alrighty, there we go. We are live again. Thinking I need to go grab a drink real quick. So if you are already here, feel free to go ahead and hop on in. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that beverage and I'll be right back.
Alrighty, I am back with water. How's it going, everybody? Hey, how's it going, Rumor? Who gifted a sub? Thanks, man. Oh, is it? Oh, I thought you subscribed. At least that's how it popped up on my end. I saw Vermeer subscribe. That was uh, in the last stream a little bit ago. I was like, oh. Alrighty. But yeah, feel free to uh, do a join he, she, they. Go ahead and get into a faction. We can see about getting this show on the road. Yeah, it's exciting. We're at, uh, what is that, four out of five subs now? So that's always fun. We're getting close. We will soon accomplish the goal. World domination will be ours. <laughs> Don't have the income to subscribe? That's fair. Yeah. Knowing how long it takes you to get paid where you're at? <laughs> Month and a half? So we got a chief, we got a grandy, we just need one more. I subscribed on Prime. Fair. Said one of your goals was complete. Ayo. Hey, uh, I know I finally marked the uh, community challenges complete a little bit ago. Because <laughs> that was something I forgot to do earlier. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. Sub goal. Your goal of five subs was just completed. Ayo, wait a minute. What? What do you mean that was just completed four minutes ago? I was... Ayo? I ought to subscribe with Prime. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Haya. Thank you for the sub. <laughs> I just processed that. I was just like, hold up. Had to read back up through. But yeah, there we go. That takes us up to five sub points. How much do we need for more emotes? Do you get like more emotes with it? Uh, let's see here. I'll have to figure it out. Let's see here. Unlock progress. Mission, get 15 subscriber points. Reward one standard emote slot and one animated emote slot. Interesting. So according to Twitch, the goal is 15. According to me, though, I'm, I'm pleased as punch. <laughs> All right. We just need one more person, one more brave individual to join he, she, they. So we can get ourselves a patrician and we can see about getting this show going. Room is finally not feeling like a sauna or Antarctica. That's great. Hey, yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Love that. Hey, let's go. We got our one more. So we got our patrician, we got our chief, we got our grandee. Let's do this. Let's get the show on the road. Oh, interesting 
split that we've got here for the land. Chief's got a lot of land up in the north. The whole capital region basically is under their control. <laughs> they got it surrounded, I should say. Alright. Well, let's see here. Council introduction. Let's go ahead and meet the nobles. Chancellor. Now that you're the queen, your first duty is to meet with the Council of Nobles. Your nobles hail from all across the kingdom. The wintry north, the wealthy coast, and of course, the scorching south. Introduce yourself to the chiefs of the north. Chief Hayato. Good luck in the days ahead, your majesty. You'll need it. Dealing with our slot. Patricians of the coast. Lady Patrician Gemini. A pleasure, your august majesty. I hope to see our kingdom prosper and grow wealthy under your reign. And grandees of the south. Grandee Vermeer. May the ninth god bless your reign, your majesty. I trust you will conduct yourself with honor and faith. And with that, the introductions are done. The council hall immediately fills with raised voices as the nobles argue with each other and demand your favor. You sigh and sit back. Is this what the council is like? No wonder your father told you to avoid the throne at all costs. Alright, let's go ahead and have a coronation. Chancellor. Your Majesty, I've scheduled your coronation to take place in a week's time. Shouldn't I be giving the orders now? Of course, Your Majesty. But to delay any longer would make the nobles restless. And when nobles get restless, they take their daggers and look for the nearest back. Well, we wouldn't want that, I suppose. As is tradition, the council will decide what happens at your coronation. Of course. They made sexy, I'll take it. Oh, uh, you're a fan of how your avatar turned out, Vimir? Shall we call the nobles in? Alright, so. For those who don't know, I can use uh, laws to affect the voting options. Otherwise, once I hit start vote, it'll be exclamation point vote, and then space, and the letter of your choosing. So, uh, you know what? Let's just see where we end up. What's it gonna be? Let thy will be known, my nobles. Fifteen seconds. Exclamation point vote, and then the option that you would like. CC, are you causing a ruckus? Can I help you? Alrighty. Throwing the queen into the river. I see how you are. Alright. All of you unanimously want to throw the queen in the river. Okay. Okay. It is decided. The queen will be thrown in the river. What kind of coronation is that? A very traditional ceremony, dating back to Queen Alma the Wise. It's meant to represent you being reborn as a true queen. The nobles pick you up and carry you out to the Treadwater River, hurling you into the shallow water with a cheer. When you climb back up the banks, soaking wet, the Chancellor steps forward and places the crown upon your head. Is it your imagination, or the, some of the nobles' stifling giggles? They wouldn't dare giggle at a very traditional ceremony, right? Right? Spymaster. Your Majesty, when you die, how do you hope the kingdom will remember you? Let's see here. Uh, we have a good bit of trade. Seven, six, only three for the chiefs, though. Farming, eh. Military, seven, four, three. Faith, yike. Uh... Let's see here. Let's be the architect of a new golden age. Why not? A lofty goal indeed. I suggest over the next few years you focus on improving the kingdom's overall trade as much as possible. Once you have an heir, I will return to discuss how your ambition is progressing. Good luck, your majesty. Thank you, spy master. Scheme. Chiefs. So... Aya, this one's going to be for you. Selby of the Hayato clan, powerful northern orator, stands precariously on a longhouse crossbeam, screaming like a fallen god. 
chiefs of the north, we all know that I should be on the throne, not this imposter Queen Noel. How do we make that happen? Hydrate or dihydrate? You got it, Vimur. All right, this one's for you. We got Prophecy, Ragnarok, or Doppelganger. What's it going to be, chiefs? What are you thinking, Haya? You got 10 seconds. <clears throat> What's your plan to overthrow me? I'd geek out if I got north. Oh, yeah, you would, Vimur. All right, prophecy. <clears throat> Raise authority. The chiefs plan to realize an ancient northern prophecy. Before the new monarch rises, the kingdom will be ruled by a mad tyrant. To advance their scheme, the Chiefs must raise authority to five or more in two seasons. Scheme, Grandees. Seraphina of the Vimur lineage, notorious southern orator, stands bathed in sunshine, speaking softly. A false pretender occupies the throne while my claim is ignored. Grandees of the south, this is a stain on our honor. We must not allow it to go unanswered. So, Grandees, Vimur, I believe. Yes. This is you. Your options are Subterfuge, Intimidation, or Uprising. You can either lower stability, raise stability, or raise the treasury. Let thy will be known. What is your scheme? <clears throat> Give you a couple of seconds extra. All right, subterfuge, lower stability. The grandees plan to replace the queen's advisors with their own agents. First, they must prove they're doing a bad job. To advance their scheme, the Grandees must lower stability to four or less in three seasons. Now, last but not least, this one's going to be for you, Jim. We have Claudia of the Gemini 19 family. Sinister coastal tycoon. Scribbles a, with a well-used quill on a hardwood desk, speaking calmly. Fellow patricians of the coast, my claim to the throne is far more legitimate than that of Queen Noel. Something must be done. So, options are sorcery, conspiracy, or corruption. <laughs> she lies, my lord hanger. Nave. Ooh, we got some, some hostility coming out between the patricians and the chiefs. All right, conspiracy. Lower the treasury. All of you gunning for my kingdom stats, I see how you are. The patricians plan to sink the queen under an ocean of debt. To advance their scheme, the patricians must lower the treasury to 1,500 or less in three seasons. All right, so we've got a treacherous half-sibling, a distant cousin, and a long-lost niece. Okay. Warning, the monarch currently has no heir. This is fine. Laws of the land. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> let's go ahead and... Call for unity. Hmm. Alright. Avalanche. Chief Hayato. A devastating avalanche has buried a mountain village within my domain. There were few survivors. I suppose the kingdom should lend a helping hand. The other nobles are under no obligation to help the north, but surely they will vote with compassion. Vet, your auto mod is fighting us. Ooh, okay. Let me, uh... Let me see here. Ah, uh, I don't have any pings from my auto mod. Ah, there we go. I got you. I'll, I'll, I'll allow that word through for you. Alright, so, the options are to send financial aid, instruct the archbishop to lead a memorial for those lost... Or there is nothing to be done. Uh, 
Uh... So, what's it gonna be? What are we planning to do? Bet you're not uh, getting the correct hi am just syntax. <laughs> I see, so I'm hearing I need to get myself an actual mod. Vet is his real name, or does that mean something? I'm stupid. Uh, it's after my Final Fantasy character, Yvette. Yeah. Okay. So far, it's a split vote. So we either send financial aid or instruct the Archbishop to lead a memorial. Necessarily want to hit my treasury that hard. That's fine. Yes, I am known by many names, Fumar. Also, I realized I should probably move the chat box over to the convenient chat box location. There we go. Damn it, delayed uh, chat with timed voting. Uh, maybe try refreshing browser. I don't think I have any. Either way, chiefs are furious uh, that we, uh, you know, deny their ability to look for people and just held a memorial. Captain Vet, sufferer of the seas. That would be uh, an interesting thing to do. Maybe get some uh, some Sea of Thieves on here. Let's see your counterfeit currency down in the south. Treasure. The South has been prosperous of late, but my tax collectors are reporting suspicious coins in the latest takings. The whole region is awash with fake money. The council needs to act. So, we can either tell everyone in the South to examine their coins and return any duds, offer a substantial reward if counterfeiters are caught, or order our artificers to invent a new coin that is hard to counterfeit. I'm going to veto that. I would need to re-download Shifty Eyes. I would as well. I have not played Sea of Thieves in some time. Alright, 20 seconds. Let that will be known. <clears throat> 10 seconds. And the North remains enigmatic. Ooh, never mind. Voting is closed. We are examining our coins and returning any duds. Town criers across the south ring their bells and order townsfolk to beware forged coins. Unfortunately, the result is a complete loss of trust in the queen's coinage. Southern townsfolk barter goods instead, while the merchants ask for foreign currencies. Ouch. Trade is now modest. He has standard suspicious standards. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, honor Guard. High Inquisitor. Good news, your majesty. I have received a vision. I saw you bathed in holy light. Blades and missiles crumbling to dust before they could reach you. You do not need to recruit an Honor Guard. The Ninth God will shield you from all harm. Marshal. I've never seen the Ninth protect someone from a sword through the chest. You need tangible guards, your majesty. And, uh... <laughs> what does trade matter when I can overtax my people? I'm trying to raise trade, so that ended up hurting me. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we are not going without guards, as tempting as it is to try and get the extra faith. Uh, what we are instead doing is we're going to go... Northern Warriors. I'll make the arrangements at once. Foolishness! Do you not trust in the protection of the Ninth? This kingdom grows more faithless by the day. Uh, correct, High Inquisitor. Uh, I seem to recall one of my, uh, you know, in, in an alternate timeline, somebody not getting an honor guard and getting themselves taken out. <laughs> The warrior heroes arrive a few weeks later. They swagger in with big grins and bigger axes, belching and singing and roaring out unsavory jokes. One of your courtiers faints. <laughs> it unintentionally wrecked. <laughs> Alright, let's end the season. 
So, we've got buildings. Also, I see we've uh, gone up in viewership. If you'd like to join in, feel free at any time with exclamation point to join, and then your preferred pronouns, he, she, they. So, this is the auction. How this works is you can uh, vote to fund buildings. So you use the command exclamation point fund x, y, where x is the letter of the building you want to fund, and y is how much you want to give. So, let's go ahead and get this auction underway. You got one minute. Only the two most funded buildings will be built. Forty five seconds. We got funding for D coming in. Four hundred for the prison to lower stability. Seven hundred and fifty coming in for F to lower authority. Five hundred coming in for the monument on A. Ooh. Even more money coming in. Five hundred and one more coming in for D. 15 seconds now. <clears throat> How far are these nobles willing to go? 10 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. <clears throat> All right. Let's see here. Buildings funded. We've got the prison lowering stability. And then the theater lowering authority. Our authority is about to crumble. Holy shit. Yike. Uh, like, I don't remember what it said I needed that I was talking. Uh, so the patrician's goal is to lower treasury. You can look for these little pips. The blue pip is the chiefs, and then the arrows are an indicator, for example. So chiefs want authority stat up. Patricians want treasury stat down. And the grandees want stability right where it is, which is why it's a check mark. One bitches, I'm poor now. Yeah, you spent a lot of money, Vimmer. Uh, let's see here. A laughing stock. Uh oh. Your Majesty, the acclaimed pl playwright Reginald Chickensteel has written another smash hit. All the theaters in the capital are showing it nightly. What's the problem? The problem is the new play features a character obviously based on you. How am I portrayed? The character is played by a professional clown named Biffo. At one point, a bucket of custard is upended over her head as she sits on the throne. Your Highness, peasants and nobles alike are watching this play. The theaters are packed. You must put a stop to it. You simply cannot be known as Queen Biffo. If I ban the play, I'll put out a warrant. Two days later, Reginald Chickensteel is brought before you in chains. He's shivering in his little pointy boots. We caught up to him as he was boarding a ship to the Republic of Kurth, Your Highness. No, but please have mercy! So we can either execute Reginald Chickensteel. Let him rot in the dungeons, or order him to change the role into a heroic one. Mm. <clears throat> we can force him to change the play. <sighs> Let's see here. He will live, but he's going to change that role. Yes, of course. I'll, I'll rewrite the role immediately. As, as satires go, it was a little broad anyway. When the play is re-released, everyone agrees that it's lost what made it special. Many of the nobles are furious that you arrested and threatened the great Reginald Chickensteel. Authority is now dubious, and defiance goes up across the board. But at least you dealt with a threat to your authority. <laughs> Our child puts it to the queen so proud. <laughs> the clown's getting thrown in the river. It's probably what started up that whole thing with the play. Alright, finding a spouse. In the twisty passages of your castle, you can avoid your advisors, the nobles, even the spy master. But there's one person you can't avoid. Your mother. 
How dare you, Queen Biffo? I will execute you, Vimar, for your insolence. I've killed for less. Well, maybe not in this timeline. But, if I was another ruler... Oh, man. <laughs> Why haven't you found a spouse yet? It's been almost a year. But, Mother, I don't want to get married. Nonsense. A queen cannot rule alone. Don't worry. I'll take the liberty of finding eligible candidates. What is your preference? Men, women, or do you not mind? Uh, let's see here. I'm not interested in love. Uh, wiggle the cursor. I'm... I'll send out messengers to the most influential noble families in the kingdom. Let's see what they have to offer. I'll be honest. Uh, I wiggled the cursor and clicked. I'm not sure where I ended up. Well, we're going to see what kind of spouses we get. <laughs> Northern Outrage. Uh-oh. Chief Hayato. I demand the Archbishop apologize for insulting us at the Avalanche Memorial the other month. We may worship different gods than the rest of you, but we're all citizens of the same kingdom. We deserve respect. So we can sack the Archbishop and replace him with one who will keep his mouth shut. Order the Archbishop to apologize, stay silent on the matter, or declare the Archbishop has the Queen's full support. Admittedly, the fact that we can just, like, get rid of him is kind of hilarious. I wonder if it actually, like, replaces him with a new, uh, like, unique model. Alright. I'm curious. Uh, let's see here. I'm putting my little monarch straight. I'm curious if there's actually a new Archbishop model. Because I've always done a sort of, like, Saltspire thing for it, but who knows? I can't help but be curious. <clears throat> Vote A. Oh, wait. Alright, we're sacking the Archbishop. Do it. Two burly officers drag the archbishop from the church, still dressed in his striped pajamas. His replacement is installed before nightfall. Faith goes up everywhere. Defiance goes up in the coast in the south, goes down in the north. The archbishop's sacking satisfies the north, but the rest of the kingdom is in shock at such treatment of a holy man. In sermons up and down the country, priests preach that you are a tyrant. <laughs> Not quite tyrannical enough for a prophecy, though. <laughs> Alright. Stability is fucking crumbling, though. We might need to do something about that. <clears throat> Interpreting the prophecy. Far to the north, where snow blankets the landscape and wolves howl in the night, the chiefs uncover an ancient prophecy foretelling the rise of a tyrant queen and the warrior who will overthrow you. This isn't what the prophecy says would happen. Sorcha. Right. Wasn't there supposed to be a tyrant queen? Something about drowning the kingdom in blood? Aye, aye. Keep your hat on. We're not there yet. She needs a bit of encouragement. That's all. A few more executions, unjust imprisonments, that sort of thing. Then the prophecy will be fulfilled, and Selby will rise. Chief's aim is to raise authority to at least five. All right, so... With the end of this particular season, we've got the trade bonus coming in. The higher your region's particular trade stat, the more likely they are to get the trade bonus. Grandy's got this one. Grandy's discover a cheap method of making dyes, saving 500 wealth. Other nobles gain 200 wealth. And we can either tax or not tax accordingly. Let's see here. I need to do some bribes, honestly. Tax the rich, bail out the poor, you know, that kind of stuff. As I was saying, you can try executing me all you want, but I will steal your ass scraper medieval times after all. Uh huh. Too many big words, threats of violence, true to high amcha. <laughs> okay, but yeah, I need a lower defiance or else there is the chance of rebellion. So for now, that's what we're gonna have to do. Continue to the rebellion report. On the verge of rebellion. They shouldn't be able to, though. Uh, apparently they can if they're so inclined. Even though I brought it to heal. I thought it was... Okay, yeah, rebellion halted. Defiance is below authority or stability. So it'd have to be again type deal. Alright. 
Uh, let's see here. Eligible options. Where did we end up? I have found three potential matches for you. One eligible young woman from each of the kingdom's three regions. Ah, we're a lesbian queen. Let's go. Choose wisely. You'll be securing a powerful alliance. Yes, yes, I know. Your mother leads you to the Great Hall, where she's arranged three portraits on easels. For now, each is covered by a cloth. Wait, I don't even get to meet them? There's no time for sentiment. You just need a match that befits your station and suits your political needs. She looks away the cloth from the first portrait. This is Marta, firstborn daughter of the Northern Hayato clan. She's been a melancholy sort ever since she was a child, but otherwise she's decent enough company. I've heard she spends most of her time playing cards or making wagers with friends and hangers-on. They say she's popular with the common folk up north, too. I can see the appeal, I suppose. Taxi me, you buffoon, I have Donald Trump. For Mer, I gave you a tax bailout. I bailed out the, uh, the Grandies and the Patricians. I taxed <laughs> the north. Now, let's see here. From the coast, we have Harona. The wealthy heiress to the to Lady Patrician Gemini's estate. I mean, just look at her. She's gorgeous. And apparently she's got a silver tongue, too. Her interests are typical of the coast. Money, 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 and making more of it. But to her credit, she gives a lot of it to charity. I like the sound of her. And finally, from the south, Serafina, the eldest daughter of the Vemur lineage. A quiet and retiring soul, preferring solitude to the company of others. Like many in the South, she claims to put her faith in the Ninth God above all worldly concerns. Despite that, though, she's said to have collected sins like a soldier collects medals. Not bad. Not bad at all. What do you think? Of course, by picking a candidate, you'll anger the other regions, but you'll gain a lifelong alliance. Hmm. Let's see here. <coughs> Looking at the state. Hmm. So we've got depressed gambler GF from the north. We've got charitable wealthy heiress from the coast who likes to make money and then give it away. And then we've got a quiet person who prefers to be alone, but also collects sins like soldiers collect medals. Hmm. All right. My stability is a little awful. And so I think having a, you know, a co-queen, a, a queen consort that gives to charity, that'll go over well with the people. And so she'll help pump the, uh, the stability up. And uh, that, should, that should work nicely, I think. Yeah, let's do it. Excellent. I'll make the arrangements. Alright. Defiance goes down on the coast. Defiance goes up everywhere else. Damn you. I'm sorry, Vimur. I need somebody who can help me recover this stability. And a queen consort who gives to charity, I think, is the way to do it. That'll go over well with the people. Hydrate or dehydrate? You got it, boss. Ah, some high quality H2O. Losing trust. Treasure. Your Majesty, the common folk of the South still don't trust our coins. They've gone back to bartering with chickens and bushels of wheat. If we don't do something to win back their trust soon, their economy will completely implode. <laughs> Forcibly buy up all the chickens and wheat and other barter goods. Uh, South should adopt a foreign currency instead. Without having done anything, claim to have resolved the crisis or there's nothing to be done. Alright, we are going to veto buying up everything. You can't escape water? Okay, I gotta hydrate more. Let thy will be known, my nobles. Ah. 
Yep, I'm sorry. I'm not letting you completely drain the treasury, Gemini. <laughs> I'm not letting the treasury hit rock bottom. <clears throat> Let's see here. There's nothing to be done. All right. Give it a couple more seconds. Voting tied at one. We're gonna test my authority. We're just gonna we're gonna see. It's forty five percent chance. Let's see if we can. Uh, let's see if we get lucky. Failed. Okay. You travel the length and breadth of the South, giving triumphant but vague speeches about how you solved the currency crisis. Unfortunately, the common folk trust your word as much as they do your coins. They keep on happily bartering and with random assortments of farmyard animals. Ooh. <laughs> Farming is now rampant. Ah, uh, jeez. Certain economy doesn't completely implode. In fact, their farms are more bountiful than ever, but commoners are locked out from trade from the rest of the kingdom. Stability is now lawless. Holy shit. <clears throat> what the hell? Curious discovery. Chief Hayato. Your Majesty will recall the devastating avalanche that struck the north. Yes, I remember. A, tra a tragedy. The avalanche uncovered an ancient stone door embedded in the mountainside. We suspect it may be one of our ancestors' tombs. Some locals pried it open and investigated within. They did not return. So you can either send a group of renowned northern warriors to explore the ruins, send a team of scholars from Quail University, or order the tomb shut back up. Alright. What's it going to be? What's the plan, my nobles? Order it closed. My goodness. Hai is just trying to piss off his own people. He's antagonizing his own faction. <laughs> Alright, luckily my call for unity gets us one extra stability, but... This is the tomb of our ancestors, and we deserve to know what it's hiding. You are forbidding us from knowing our own heritage. You suspect he is more concerned over the fact that the ruins could contain valuable treasure. Still no point risking it. Ouch. Guys, what the hell? Chaos in the kingdom. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> in the south, beneath a scorching sun, Grandee Vemur is strolling through his vineyard in the company of a few close friends. Praise be. I've stopped paying taxes, and the kingdom's in such a state that the queen hasn't even noticed. Serafina. Indeed, the kingdom's in great jeopardy, and the council is calling for the queen's inner circle to resign. We need to increase the pressure. If the queen's in a weak enough position, she's got no choice but to bow to our demands. No more interfering spymaster, no more marshal or chancellor or treasurer. A whole new inner circle, all made up of grandees. For the next stage of their scheme, the grandees must lower authority to four or less in three seasons. Okay, so I've got to pick if I keep my authority at four and let the grandees hit end game, or if I raise authority and let the chiefs make progress. Uh, so chiefs and grandees, you are officially aligned against each other. You cannot both succeed at the moment. In a dingy seaside tavern, two patricians of the coast meet to plot their latest scheme. Lady Patrician Gemini. The treasury is not empty. The queen won't be tempted by our loan offers. Claudia. Maybe we can arrange some kind of heist. Don't get ahead of yourself, Lady Patrician. This coup will be conducted entirely within the bounds of the law. We have our principles, after all. The patrician's aim is to lower the treasury to 1,500 or less. Alrighty. Uh, let's see here. If nobles vote for the monarch's choice, they gain 500 personal wealth. Or I could take stop the count and make it a real quick one. On the verge of rebellion for the grandees. Yep. Currently, everybody is still loyalist, though. Let's see here. The royal wedding. 
Your wedding to Hirona is, naturally, the talk of the kingdom. Nobles and peasants alike travel from across the realm to attend. For a week and a day, the capital is one giant party. It feels like you're the only one not taking part. Instead, you're getting ready for the ceremony. Soon enough, you're standing in St. Bertrand's Cathedral with Hirona at your side. Do you take this woman as your lawfully wedded wife? Ah, okay, so it doesn't actually replace the Archbishop model. We just have technically an Archbishop the second. I do. Then I pronounce you queen and wife. After the wedding, of course, there's a feast. And after the feast, a dance. Your new wife, Hirona, laps up the attention, delivering a witty speech when she flatters you outrageously. All right. We're doing okay. <laughs> we have lowered defiance. We've raised authority and stability. By the time you find yourself alone with Hirona, it's past midnight and you've never felt more tired. You danced so very beautifully. It was such a wonderful day, wasn't it? I admit that your heart wasn't in it. This shocks her at first. And then she smiles. Me neither. Still, I suppose it's the game we must play. Let's drop the act, shall we? With pleasure. Well, what should we talk about? I'm so used to steering a conversation into safe waters, I've forgotten how it... Had to let it run its natural course. Just tell me what you're most passionate about. Making money. No sound is sweeter than the clinking of coins. Tell me a secret. I don't have any secrets, really. Just plans. Big plans. The Archbishop's a pompous old fool, isn't he? From there, the conversation flows like fine wine. You pass a bottle back and forth, joking about the greedy nobles and the self-righteous archbishop. At night's end, you join your wife in bed, feeling for the first time that you've glimpsed her real feelings. Let's go! No stability went up? How'd that happen? Uh, stability went up because I got married from her. That said, you already cleared your first checkpoint. Your first check was stability at four or less, and you dropped it down to fucking two. Or no, one. And then I recovered it up to two with a <laughs> with a uh, call for unity. Your goal now, Vimmer, is to lower authority. Uh, Haya's goal was to get authority to at least five, so he's going to be passing his check when it comes around. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Lisbeen for life, bet. Yeah, something like that. All right, Lady Patrician Gemini. Ah, um, mother-in-law. Good to meet you. Your August Majesty, I bring bad news from the coast. We are receiving reports of Chief Ayato. I'm sure your news can wait. I bring urgent tidings from the north that demand the Queen's attention at once. Wait your turn, you ignorant dolt. Grandy Vermeer. Why don't you settle your quarrel outside? Meanwhile, I have news from the south that is really urgent. Now, now, one at a time, Lady Patrician Gemini. The industries of the coast are in grave danger. The workers are striking. They demand fewer hours and higher pay. <laughs> is that all? Buy Morgana's cauldron. The north is increasingly lawless, your highness. Some chiefs have taken advantage, declaring themselves independent of your rule. My news is worse still. The cities of the south are being consumed with riots on a weekly basis. Our citizens want to overthrow the queen and elect a more competent ruler. Chancellor, all these problems have arisen because the kingdom is increasingly unstable, your majesty. Something must be done. What do you suggest? Unfortunately, we lack the resources to tackle all these problems at once. We must vote on which matter to prioritize. All right, so let's see here. We can either break up the strikes along the coast, send troops to bring the independent chiefs back to the kingdom, or restore order in the southern cities. Uh, and I really hate to do this to you, Vimmer, but we're not restoring order to the southern cities. And again, I guess it would have been fine. Chief's faith is already zero, but... I need more faith elsewhere in the kingdom. 
Guessing grandees are Egyptian. Uh, grandees are Spaniards, I think is what it is. It's the nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition meme. Whether or not I'm actually successfully putting that into any sort of accent, I know I'm failing, but I think that's the intent anyway. I suppose I'm voicing them a little more French. All right. So we're bringing the independent chiefs back up to heal. You order the chiefs to bring their independence-minded brethren back into the royal fold. And the north is rocked by vicious battles. Thousands of loyal northern troops die in brutal sieges against mountain fortresses, but your victory is inevitable. The independent chiefs pledge fealty once more. The crisis in the north has been quashed, making the kingdom as a whole slightly more stable, but the nobles of other regions feel that you're ignoring their problems. Oh boy! Uh, let's see here. Putting on a show. Hydrate or dehydrate? You got it. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Ah, oh, mother-in-law. Good to see you again. Your esteemed highness, I have the most wonderful solution to all that excess gold cluttering your treasury. We should put on a mock sea battle in the coastal arena. For too long we've put up with gladiators fighting to death on dry land. Boring... That sounds expensive. That's the point. It would be the advent of a century. <clears throat> we waterproof the arena and fill it with seawater. Then we crew a few custom-built ships with our most expendable gladiators and have them duke it out before a screaming crowd. <clears throat> so, we can either hold a mock sea battle in the arena as a cheaper alternative, hold the event at sea, or forbid the arena from experimenting with naval combat. Uh, let's see here. Well, let's go at it. <clears throat> just know that if we bankrupt, I think the game just kind of ends. <laughs> and then it's whoever has the highest total stats wins. I'm sorry, Jim. You are voted against. Well, this does throw the authority race back into uh, back into Vermeer's favor, I think. I suppose it's a little impractical to waterproof the entire arena. I'll make the arrangements to hold the mock battle. Let's see. <clears throat> a few weeks later, the show is held just offshore with audience members jammed into a few overcrowded cargo ships. It starts off well enough with the gladiator ships circling each other and firing specially made mini cannons. Unfortunately, in a particularly exciting moment, a gladiator captain swinging on a rope, cutlass between her teeth. The crowd rushes forward to get a better look and tips their boat over. Dozens of people drown, including many of the best artisans of the coast, and Lady Patrician Gemini sinks to her doom, weighed down by her gold and silver jewelry. The common folk whisper that the disastrous sea battle was a huge waste of money and shows that you have no control over your spending. Gemini the second has joined the council. What is that? Aunt in law? <laughs> Question mark. All right, in season. <clears throat> Starting a conspiracy. In a dingy seaside tavern, two patricians of the coast meet to plot their latest scheme. Lady patrician Gemini the second. The treasury is practically empty. The queen is struggling to fund her ambitions. We're perfectly placed to offer her a loan. So helpful of us. Indeed, these loan arrangements will be as friendly as a bear trap, absolutely loaded with hidden catches and the small print. Now watch me work my magic. Treasurer. Good evening, Lady Patrician. What exactly is the purpose of this meeting? I heard about the Queen's recent money troubles, and I thought we could both benefit. Sign here and here. Hmm. This agreement does seem fair. Very well. I'll sign. The Queen will be pleased. Good night, Lady Patrician, and may the Ninth bless you. Uh-oh. See? Easy as pie. But it's not enough to bankroll the Queen. The rest of the Kingdom must be in debt to us as well. To advance their schemes, the Patricians must have the highest trade of all regions in three seasons. Really now? <laughs> well, they're the only ones with trade left. Oh, shit. <clears throat> All 
All right, on to the rebellion report. Currently, the Grandies of the South could rebel, but they're about to move into the end game of their scheme. So, if they do rebel, they put their scheme on pause. Let's see here. Wow, all of it is in the coast. Okay. An untimely death. Hey, noble patrician Solid Yindorse the second. How's it going? Alrighty. Murder! My parent, noble patrician Solid Yindorse, has been murdered, and I know who did it. It was Grandi Vermeer by the ninth. Don't let him deny it. I won't deny that I killed the venerable noble patrician, Solid Yindors, but it was no murder. Solid Yindors agreed to an honorable duel, which I won. By the ninth, it was no duel. It was a cold-blooded killing. What reason would my parent possibly have to duel you in the first place? The reason for any duel is between the challenger and the challengee, a private matter not fit for this council. All right. <coughs> So, we can either hold a trial for Grand Evamur. Uh, this grandee is a danger to all. Imprison him. The spy master should investigate evidence of this claim. A duel is a duel. Let the accused go free. Let thy will be known. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, so I'm sorry, Yinders. Yeah, you're already dead, apparently. Your first appearance is as the second. <laughs> Ooh. I had it to stop the count. So it was 15 seconds with an auto end. <clears throat> Let's see here. Zakin. Unacceptable. This is a direct violation of our cultural rights. To be punished for following the ancient codes. And with no evidence, the Ninth God's wrath upon you all. Defiance is now vengeful. Holy shit. Noble Patrician Solid endorse the second. It is clear where his wrath now lies, murderer. This is exactly what you deserve. Holy shit. So. <laughs> oh boy. Straight to jail. Yep. Straight to jail. <laughs> Stage fright. <clears throat> Spy Master, Your Majesty, there have been some strange rumors regarding the Grand Theater recently built in the coastal city of Simassus. Simassus. People are saying that an unscheduled play is performed there at midnight and that anyone who watches it will die six days later. Several deaths have already occurred. D sorry, did you say six days? I'm sorry. Solidy endorsed the second. Are you about to die as well? By the ninth, your serene highness, I, I went and saw that midnight play out of idle curiosity. That the, the, that was f five days ago. <laughs> well, it was nice knowing you. <laughs> Eep! <laughs> the council needs to do something. Save me! <laughs> Send the queen to watch a performance. Raise the theater to the ground. Send the High Inquisitor to perform an exorcism. This is all just superstition and empty gossip. You know what? I'm curious. If it happens, it happens. Yep. Eep. <laughs> oh, good lord. That's getting clipped, isn't it? Ten seconds now. Alrighty. <clears throat> We're sending the High Inquisitor to perform an exorcism. I didn't clip it yet. Oh, good lord. I shouldn't have said anything. High Inquisitor. I will not let you down, Your Majesty. I'll take a full team of my best Inquisitors. When the High Inquisitor returns from the theater, her face is ashen. Her eyes are wild. <laughs> a demon lurks there. A power greater than any I've seen. We must burn it down. Burn it down. Well. <clears throat> no. We're 
solid indoors. You don't want to burn down the theater? I'm going to die again. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, if we burn down this theater, it'll probably let the demon out on like everything else. We just built the thing. Then doom will befall Siasimus. Simassos. As for Noble Patrician Saladin Doris the Third, Noble Patrician Saladin Doris the Third was right to be worried. They die the next day, convulsing and frothing out of the mouth. Okay, so the second. Okay, that's just a bug there. Huh. They die the next day, convulsing and frothing out of the mouth. What is this? Saladin Doris the Third has joined the council. Their death playing on your mind, you journey down to Samasis and enter the theater at midnight. The lobby is dark and full of jagged shadows. The silence is hungry. Your honor guard accompany you, but somehow you don't feel comforted by their presence. As you settle into a seat, so I went and watched it anyway because I didn't run it down. Fair. Someone on, someone on stage lights a candle. Three actors stand in a circle of flickering light. They look like they're sleepwalking, but that doesn't stop them launching into their lines. Try as thou might, usurper, thou cannot prevail. Not against all eight of us. Eight of you. Thine prime master hath vanished, which maketh seventh. I hath drowned the third, which maketh six. And my new ally maketh five. Ally? I am sorry, my brother. We are destined to lose this fight if I do not bend the knee. Sister... Together we forge this world from stardust. You would turn traitor for this newcomer. The rest of the play unfolds. The two newfound allies defeat their enemy in battle, lay him out on a table, and feast together on his flesh. The special effects are worryingly convincing. But in the bloody banquet's aftermath, the actor slips a poisoned seed into the actress's wine. She dies, cursing him for a traitor as flowers burst from her belly. The curtain closes on a scene of tragedy. The actor, the last survivor, steps forward, eyes piercing your soul. I will let you free, your majesty, without suffering my curse. On one condition. You answer my question. Who was I portraying in that play? Oh, fuck me. Oh, I gotta remember my lore. Uh, let's see here. The second god was, I think, the god of war. Oh, yikes. Yeah. The second one was the god of war, which is why you could find the arm of arm of a dead god. It was either fifth or sixth. Oh, shit. You got spared and I didn't? Favoritism? I'm not spared yet. I have a chance. Ah, oh, fuck. I think it was the sixth god who was the trickster. Incorrect. Shit. Your northern warriors convulse and shudder in their seats, foam at their lips, dying in much the same manner as noble patrician Solidian Dorst the Third. Guards, guards, you got your honor guard killed in the line of duty. Stability is now teetering. You flee the theater, running like a thousand demons are nipping at your heels. As you jump into your waiting carriage, the entire city of Simassos descends into chaos and violence. It's as though the peasants are filled with a sudden madness. In the unrest, the arts district burns to the ground, taking the cursed theater with it. Churches are turned into slaughterhouses. Countless blasphemies are carved into the city walls. Holy shit. And yes, I got a uh, I got an achievement there. Guards, guards for getting my honor guard killed. <laughs> Holy shit! Faith is now skeptical. Trade is now modest. Authority is now credible. God damn! Wait, my authority went up. <laughs> Even after you reach the safety of the palace, you're wracked by hideous nightmares of blood and flowers. Nightmares that will haunt you for the rest of your life. Holy shit! Holy shit. <clears throat> A helping hand. Harona. Noel, 
I had something I wanted to ask of you. What can I do for you? As you surely know, I run a very successful jeweler's guild back home in the coast. But the current laws are a little restrictive for my trade. Lots of tariffs and regulations, you know how it is. I was hoping you could push some changes in the council? Eliminate some of the import duties on a Teshi jewels, perhaps? You want me to give the coast preferential treatment? I think it's only fair. The other regions just can't compete with us in the jewelry trade anyway. Let's see here. Does that mean Hirona is my sister or my niece? Uh, since you died? Uh, I'm assuming whenever you die, it is a sibling. Then again, it does say like the second, so... Uh, it's saying the second implies that instead of it being like a sibling of yours, it would be a child. So this would be your sister, Harona, I think. Jim. Yeah, Harona was the daughter of the Gemini family. <clears throat> so I guess, yeah, technically this would be sister. More hydrates? Okay. Yeah, because of the number. Okay. Fine, I'll assemble the council. Ah, excellent, I'll see you there. So, we can either reduce the import taxes on gemstones from Atesh, ban the import of all Atesh gemstones, or do nothing. Let thy will be known. Sorry, hun, it's just good business. Ooh, okay, everyone rallying to do nothing. Here I was hoping I could get Haya and uh, Vimur on B, so that way we could reduce Patrician's trade. Fair enough. <clears throat> when Harona doesn't get the result she wanted, she leans over to whisper in your ear. Thank you for trying. I'll admit defeat on this one, for now. Yes, dear, of course. I, I did everything in my power to see your wishes fulfilled. <laughs> It's just this damn council acting against us. <laughs> in season. Interpreting the prophecy. Alright. Back in the north at Chief Hayato's clan hall, a congregation of godspeakers huddle around the tablets. Praise Morgana! The tablets are genuine! Then the gods are good, and we are blessed, and Selby will be our monarch. All hail the Lord Render! Cheers circle the clan hall. A mug of ale is tipped over Selby's head. The influence of the old gods is spreading. We must ensure we keep the old ways of the north alive, and surely Morgana will bless us with power to crown Selby. For the next stage of the chief scheme, they must lower their faith to four or less in four seasons. It's been at zero. It hasn't gone up. <laughs> it has not gone up. Okay. So, let's see, we got Monument, Stadium, Theater, Thieves Guild, Cathedral, and Grand Bazaar. You all see your money. Let's get this show on the road. One minute. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Prophecy's wild, honestly. I, I, hate to, I hate to say it's the meta pick, but it's like, whoa. Unless you have, like, a ton of faith events to raise the chief's faith... Having that second step just be, yeah, four or less faith, it's, that's a free step. High is going straight to the end game, you know? <clears throat> 30 seconds left. Fifteen seconds. Ten. Five, four, three, two, one. Ooh, couple last minute snipes there. Last second snipes, I should say. My goodness. All right, we got the Thieves Guild coming in to lower trade in the Grandees, built by Solid Yendorse, and the Theater coming in to lower authority. Continue to the Rebellion Report. Uh, 
Grandees are on the verge of rebellion, but it looks like everyone is advancing to the final stage of their scheme. Jeez. <clears throat> About your heir. Your marriage to Hirona has grown stale. Oh, you get along well enough, and you made some good memories together, but there's no spark. She cares more about maximizing profits than your happiness. But spark or no spark, you still need an heir. Congratulations are in order. The royal wedding was a magnificent affair. Thanks, Queen Mother. Uh, it went about as well as could be expected. You're still in power, aren't you? Still got the crown on your head? That's what matters. You've done well so far, but something's still missing. An heir. You need someone young, whose loyalty is assured. A child of your own would do the trick, even if they're a bastard. One of the youngest of your many cousins. I could try for my wife and I will have a child together, but as the relationship status is not great, uh, then that'll be a bit of a problem. It'll uh, it'll take a little bit of time. We could do a cousin. We could adopt a lowborn from an orphanage. <coughs> Let's see here. I'm pretty sure I have a bastard child laying around somewhere. Uh, Noel, I'm pretty sure you would remember if you had a child, but... The church won't be happy, but they're just as keen to avoid a civil war as we are. They'll legitimize the bastard without much fuss. I'll meet with the archbishop tomorrow. I'm losing trust in your advisors. <clears throat> Grandee Vimur, you're looking well for a man who was locked in the dungeons for a bit. Your Highness, I must have noticed... You must have noticed the kingdom's not exactly doing well lately. Not your fault, mind you. You're being led astray. No, it's my fault. I screwed everything up. Don't be so hard on yourself, Your Highness. It's not your fault that you're being manipulated by a cabal of spineless maggots. The spy master, the chancellor, the treasurer, the marshal. All these unelected figures whispering in your ear. Who appointed them? Can you trust them? What's the alternative? You need some southern grandees to advise you. Your current advisors lack honor, chivalry, and piety. The Ninth God doesn't favor those who conduct themselves so brutishly. I doubt the other regions would like that. Let us worry about the other regions, your highness. We'll bring them round. Just promise to think about what I said. A few months later, after Grand Eva Murr has slipped out of the throne room, your Chancellor barges in, looking flustered. Your other advisors follow behind. Chancellor. Your Majesty, the Grandees have been spreading rumors about... But, well, about me and your other advisors. Why would they do something like this? Spy Master. It's an attempt to turn the nobles against us. Trouble is, it's working. The council is demanding our resignation. I don't know how much longer we can weather this storm, your majesty. You're not exactly in the strongest position if the council wants us gone. We'll be gone within the next few months, unless you can do something about it. Call a vote and get the council back on our side. So, we can either order the grandees to apologize for spreading ugly rumors, launch an inquiry to prove your advisor's innocence, delay the scheme by one season, or do nothing. I think we need to uh, keep the grandees on the back foot for a little bit, wouldn't you say? This is delaying the grandees scheme. <clears throat> or we could raise authority to knock them out of the running there. We're going to have to do something similar with the chiefs. However, we can't pump the uh, the faith by four or five because they want it at, at four or less we're not going to get five faith on the chiefs so all we can really do versus them is delay for this however at a public council session Grandy Vimur is brought before your inner circle and forced grudgingly to apologize defiance is treasonous <laughs> but the rumors continue to swirl only time will tell if this was enough Bye bye. <laughs> uh oh, the tomb reopened. I told you not to do this, Hayato. Your Majesty, do you remember a while ago when you ordered that tomb we discovered on the mountain to be shut back up and forgotten about? Yes, I believe so. 
A low-born gang of cutthroats and looters dug the door back up despite our efforts. They cracked open the tomb. Oh, ninth god, what happened? The looters marched back out of the tomb at the head of an army of magic warriors made from ice. They've taken over a nearby fortress and declared it an independent fiefdom called Frostopia. This kind of defiance must be answered, your majesty. We don't have long to decide a response. Do we know the origin of these ice warriors? The ancient northern king Bjarnolf was rumored to be a warlock who created his own soldiers from snow and used them to crush his rivals. If these are his creations, though, they must be over 400 years old. So, we can either send a diplomatic envoy to the looters, send the northern army to wipe them out, 40% military chance, or do nothing. Alright. Well, I can't really veto it or anything. This will be interesting. Lowering our military in general is not great. Our military isn't necessarily strong enough to just wipe them out with a solid chance of success, 40%. It's worse than a coin flip, but eh. Alright. We're sending a diplomatic envoy to the looters. <coughs> When your chancellor returns from the fortress, they look thoroughly shaken. These looters are the lowest kind of ruffians, your majesty. They are claiming to be lords and ladies, throwing feasts with stolen food, playing games, gambling, and dancing and cavorting. To make matters worse, after I told them to surrender to the castle, they threw rotten eggs at me and drove me into the snow. What did you learn about the Ice Warriors? The Frozen Army worships a long-dead king named Bjarnolf. The looters have won them over with deception, claiming to be Bjarnolf's rightful heirs. Can we send a spy to tell the Ice Warriors that they've been deceived? Ooh. Well, we tried sending an army to crush... Let's see about sending a spy. An excellent idea, Your Majesty. Nice to see you approaching such problems with subtlety. A month after you send your spies north, you hear word that the Ice Warriors have mutinied. The looters' decapitated heads are spiked along the battlements of their stolen castle. <laughs> after slaughtering their masters, the Ice Warriors march back to their tomb and head inside, locking the door behind them. Let's go, baby! Let's go! TY for the drop? Oh, yeah. There should be, uh, if you own the game, you can collect Twitch drops for this game, which are outfits for your characters. <clears throat> Rebels next season. Oh boy. The grandees are doing it, huh? An insidious plot. Meanwhile, in the south, Grandee Vimur has invited his closest associates to his manor house for some wine and cheese and treason. The council demanded a shake-up, but the queen resists all calls to replace her advisors. There's little we can do while the queen holds out, but she... Something tells me her position is not as strong as she thinks. Granny's aim is to lower authority to four or less. <coughs> Alright. And I cannot tax the Grandies as they are now in rebellion. There it is. <clears throat> okay. Bunga. <laughs> Alright, I'm simply going to keep it on the common tax. No need to do anything too crazy. Kingdom is earned Kingdom is now in rebellion. First side to earn five victory points will win. Victory points are earned by events. Oh boy. Peasants on side. <clears throat> Deep in the desert, a group of rebel grandees have gathered to discuss the Civil War. With them are their spies, a cluster of nondescript southern citizens in ordinary clothes. Greetings, righteous friends. I trust the Ninth guides your path. Cardosa. The Ninth no doubt wishes Queen Noel's reign of tyranny over. That's precisely why I invited you here. We know the patricians are in the Queen's pocket, but are there peasants? I know... Southern Spy. I know for a fact the noble patrician Sol Yindors III is stockpiling food while the ordinary people of the coast go hungry. 
Our spies should spread the word. We'll be kinder to the peasants than noble patrician Solid Indorse the Third and their corrupt compatriots. Wonderful. Let us decide how to proceed. So, you can either promise riches to those who move or enlist from the coast, set aside farmland for coastal peasants, or use spies to improve our tactical military position instead. What's it gonna be, Vermeer? This one's all you. <clears throat> Boating has closed. New spies to improve. It auto chose the military option. The grandees take a gamble, focusing on gathering intel rather than luring in more raw recruits. Unfortunately, their spies are captured by coastal troops. They're never seen again. The situation bruises the grandees' pride, but it also jeopardizes their plans. In the Civil War, the smallest change could put rebellion on a knife's edge. I don't know, man. I don't understand this game. I get ya. Uh, let's see here. Opening strike. <clears throat> the kingdom is blackened by faithlessness and dishonor. The Ninth God is weeping for what we have become. And whose fault is that? Ignazia. Queen Noel, the mad tyrant. Alas, you are right. We have no choice but to raise our banners, march on the capital, and install a better ruler. Someone like the noble Seraphina. But first, we must work out our opening move. Pray to the Ninth. Let him help us decide. We can launch a preemptive strike against the chiefs to cripple their military capabilities. If we suspect that patricians may join our cause, we can call them to war. But they'll be more likely to join us if the Queen's authority is low. You could also call upon the church to condemn the queen. Or finally, you could send off an assassin to nip this in the bud. So, got a whole bunch of options. It's looking like the best bet is C, petition the church, because you've got high faith. And if the church... Oh, God. Are we going to have to fight the uh, Sisterhood of Silent Steel? I think that was what the, uh, like the potential honor guard was called. Is there a way to stop the auto choose? Uh, I mean, let's see. Okay, I can hold off. We're petitioning the church for support. All right. Faith challenge, 70%? 70%. Thank you for meeting with me, Your Holiness. Let's cut to the chase before you launch into your little speech. Do you think the church has lasted a thousand years by changing allegiances along with the weekly hymns? No, we're careful. Frankly, I don't care who wins this little war, as long as you keep me out of it. Goodbye. By the ninth. The church refuses to lend credibility to the rebels. Officially, they claim to back the queen, but their support is lukewarm. 70% faith chance. Holy shit. <clears throat> Holy. Rebellion. At long last, the grandees have reached their boiling point. You are confronted in your throne room by Grandee Verdad. Their eyes alight with a righteous fury. Verdad. The ninth god has judged you unworthy, pretender to the throne, and the grandees of the south have listened. We will rise up and fight for Seravina, the true queen. This is a formal declaration of war. Next time we see each other, we'll be on the battlefield. Seize them. Come along now. Traitors get the chop. What? But... You can't do this! I'm an envoy! See! See how the Queen's tyranny grows worse by the day! Your watchmen waste no time. Grand Eaver Dand is dragged out into the courtyard and their head is struck from their shoulders. I didn't expect them to move so boldly, Your Majesty. What are our chances against the rebels? The Grandees are formidable, but not undefeatable. I hope they don't persuade any other regions to join their rebellion. That would be disastrous. How did things get this bad? The leader of the rebellion is Grandee Vermeer. As reason for the uprising, he's citing your history of petty transgressions against the Grandees. Urge to murder. Rising. Yes, your majesty. Hold on to that feeling. You'll need it. So this is it. Civil war. 
That's right, your majesty. The kingdom is divided. There'll be a lot of death and suffering before all this is over. I can't wait. I'll go take out the trebuchets. Let's see here. Uh, so what am I supposed to do? Your goal is to use events that will have a high chance of success to try and get up to five victory points. Uh, let's see here. Do they need to all be in... The, let's see here. Let's see here. There'll be various actions that will... Yeah, you fight to succeed. Do they all need to be in the same thing? They don't need to all be in the same season, no. Alright. Bloodthirsty vet. Accurate to player. <laughs> Maybe. Accurate from cleaners to the pastry. Alright. In the season. At the villa. Uh-oh. So while this rebellion is ongoing, there are still other schemes coming after me. So I gotta be aware of those. Sitting on a bench outside a sun-bleached villa, two patricians of the coast meet to plot their latest scheme. Let me show you something. These documents represent the accumulated debts of all the other regions in the kingdom. How did you manage that? I thought they'd know better than to accept loans from us. Oh, they did. There are plenty of independent moneylenders they've taken loans from over the years. Banks in Kurth, Etesh, Tavalin. I bought up all those debts for myself. Tavalin was so pleased with the generosity of my terms, they even offered us an alliance. If the patricians are ever in trouble, Tavalinese soldiers will march to our aid. Genius. So now the chiefs and grandees owe us half their wealth. The queen owes us absolutely everything. Indeed. All that's left is to decide what we do when the time comes to collect. So, you can either graciously forgive all debts in exchange for the throne, raise stability, or squeeze every last drop of gold from this kingdom. Ray's own military. What is it going to be, patricians? <clears throat> Stability is likely to be up in the air with uh, everything going on. Military could go down if you lose battles, but also it's something you want to raise to fight battles. So... Let's see here. Raise own military. Excellent. Let's wring all the juice we can out of this lemon. Hang on. If we try this, won't the other regions just um, fight back with, like, soldiers? That's why we can't negotiate from a position of weakness. We must ensure our military is up to snuff. Civil war or no civil war. For the final stage of their scheme, the patricians must raise their military to at least six. Oh, boy. Uh, <clears throat> let's see here. Hmm. I can go Monarch's Golden Choice and replace of Stop the Count. Okay. Currently have Rebels. We have one victory point for the kingdom, though. An Unexpected Opportunity. Marshal, Your Majesty, as the Grandees were marching through the north, they were hit by a fierce blizzard. Unable to progress through the mud, they've set up a camp beside the White Fleet River. So they're setting ducks. Precisely. We must strike. Chief Ayato, Don't be foolish, Marshal. Do you think our own troops are immune to the weather? We'll have the same problems. If I may suggest another option, Your Majesty. Hello, Spymaster. The Grandees are drawing all their water from the White Fleet River. If we were to poison it upstream, their troops would suffer greatly. Gods be good! That's a dishonorable way to conduct a war. Your greatness, you cannot be seriously considering this. That's a brilliant plan. Thank you, Your Majesty. I thought so. And how do you expect us to poison a whole river? If we herd all the cattle in the north onto the river bank upstream and allow their... effluence to flow freely into the river... The water will be contaminated. It's hard to fight on an un upset stomach. We are going to literally f kill them with bullshit. Is that what you're telling me? We are going to kill them with bullshit. We are putting all the cattle onto the coast of this river so that way they shit into it. Ninth above, you are devious. 
I don't feel comfortable with this, Your Majesty. I'll need council approval before I proceed. So, we can either ambush the rebel camp with all available northern troops, 80% military, poison the Whitefleet River, which is 30% farming, or let the opportunity pass us by, which lowers farming. Uh, it looks like we just go straight military. It's looking like our best bet, maybe. We just ambush them. 80% chance? We can give it a try. <clears throat> In theory, we might just be able to crush them outright. Alright. Voting is closed. 80%. Military challenge succeeded. Let's go. Ah, oh, that's more like it. A good old-fashioned battle, as the Ninth intended. Your northern soldiers prove more resilient to snow than the Grandees. They charge into the camp, taking the rebels by surprise, and wreak havoc. By the time the Grandees have rallied their troops, your soldiers have already melted back among the trees, leaving chaos in their wake. Ha! <laughs> That'll show the bastards! And we didn't even need to dishonor ourselves in the process! The military is now inadequate. Loyalists gain a victory point. I maintain it was a perfectly viable strategy. <laughs> Thank you, Spymaster. Alright. Mustering an army. Along the southern border, countless swords flash in the blazing sun. Prayers fill the air. The Grandee's troops are gathering in vast numbers. Cardosa. By the grace of the Ninth God, we have assembled an army to strike fear into the heart of the False Queen. What next? Next, we march, but not yet. First, we must ensure that we've called upon every resource at our disposal. And on that subject, I've considered several proposals to further bolster our army for the trials ahead. So you can either... Oh, trade too low to hire Ashmedian mercenaries. You can either conscript a mass of peasants, or call upon a holy order of the Ninth, or the existing southern army will simply have to be enough. What's it going to be, Vimur? Ten seconds. What are you hitting? Which stat are you hitting to raise your military? Or will you not sacrifice anything? Conscript a mass of peasant levies. <whistles> military is now capable. The peasants are just doing useless things like harvesting grain. We'll tell them to beat their plowshares into swords as the Ninth God intended. The Grandees pull peasants off the fields and thrust spears into their calloused hands. This will mean a few bad harvests for sure, but the South can survive that, right? Uh, yeah, you're doing pretty good. Vast armies darken the landscape like the shadows of clouds. Flags are flying, drums are pounding in rhythm with the marching of boots. The kingdom is gripped with civil war. At least, that's what you imagine. Most of your time is spent in the safety of your palace, poring over a giant map with your marshal. Marshal. Your Majesty, the army of the South is advancing on our capital, led by the treacherous Kerr, Grand Mur. I received word from the commander of our loyalist forces in the coast. If they march now, they'll intercept the Grandees in a matter of days. Alternatively, they could join forces with the army of the North. It's risky, but together they'd have a higher chance of defeating the accursed Grandees. What are your orders, Your Majesty? Uh, let's see here. The patricians are now outdone by the Grandee military. They should rally with the chiefs. Very well, Your Majesty. I'll relay your orders to noble patrician Solid Yendorse the Third, commander in the field. Hopefully they'll do as they're told. God knows treachery can thrive on a battlefield. Noble Yendorse the Third. We have our orders, but should we follow them? Alright, this is for the Grandees. You can either defy and just go after the Grandees yourself follow up with orders and link up with the chiefs or you can hang back you can throw the game right at the end if you were so inclined this is a rebellion against unbuttered sandwiches <laughs> and somewhat against the queen I guess alright Gemini wants to follow orders and link up with the chiefs for a big battle alright not gonna lie I kinda want the rebellion to win Fair. I think we had a rebellion win previously. I've never successfully put down a rebellion, I guess is what I should say. The whole city holds its breath. You stew in your palace, waiting for your marshal's return. 
Finally, she arrives at your throne room, looking perfectly composed. Your Majesty, as you ordered, the patricians have turned their armies around to link up with the chiefs. We can only hope this was the right decision. Have some confidence, Your Majesty. Too late for doubts now. It all comes down to the next battle, Your Majesty. The fate of the kingdom hangs in the balance. We will prevail. That's the spirit. Now, I really must be going. I have a lot to take care of. Over the next few weeks, it becomes clear that the coastal army's retreat has given the Grandies free reign to pillage and plunder the coast. I'm sorry, coast. Ooh, the rampaging southern troops descend on farms like locusts, taking everything to feed thousands of hungry soldiers. Meanwhile, the shops, churches, and manors are plundered, and the stolen loot shipped back to the south. Trade goes up in the south, down in the coast. Some patricians' wealth has decreased, and grandees are striking it rich. But while the coast suffers, the coastal forces successfully link up with the chiefs. Now the joint army of the patricians and chiefs rush to meet the grandees in open warfare, and the winner will either end your reign or preserve it. Yeah, Vimur's taking your stuff, you endorse. All right. <sighs> Let's see here. The patricians are in the end game. Uh, let's see here, and let's see here, the Chiefs are about to enter the endgame, and I still don't have an heir, because this rebellion is eating up all of the events. End season. Okay, as if on cue. Your quest for an heir is finally complete. You stand before the council holding a small child in your arms. Should I die? I ask that my crown be passed down to... Council hall is filled with nervous silence. My legitimized, natural-born daughter. The assembled nodals break out into sporadic applause. By designating an heir, you've cemented the stability of the kingdom, provided you can survive the civil war. Though the common folk may lose some faith in the church, seeing their queen's extramarital adventures being forgiven so easily. Noble Patrician Saladin Doris III. Your Serene Highness, may I be the first to congratulate you on legitimizing your daughter. What is her name? Noel II. Most excellent, your esteemed highness. I'm sure little Noel the second will grow up to be a chip off the old block. Congratulations on finding an heir. Now you just need to fulfill your ambition. Yeah, trade hasn't been going so well. Uh, <laughs> Let's see here. The final battle. <clears throat> a month ago, battle was averted, but that battle cannot be postponed forever. The patricians and chiefs are all that stands between the grandees and the capital. A final battle, deciding the fate of the kingdom. I'll send word to the chiefs that it's time to strike. We can only hope that they'll listen to your orders, your majesty. Alright, so, voting's open. Haya, this one is just for you, my chief. You can either march, or you can not march, and you can give the grandees the game. But you have a 90% military. Crush them, Haya! Show them the might of the north! Let's go! 90%. <sighs> Military challenge succeeded. When she finally returns, she strides into your throne room with a triumphant gleam in her eyes. Let's go. Marshal, report! We caught the grandees by surprise as they were fording a river. Classic pincer maneuvement. Maneuver. The chiefs attack from one side, the patricians charge from the other. Let's go, patricians! Let's go! You should have seen it. The river ran red that day in utter slaughter. Authority is now credible. Loyalists gain victory points. Military goes down in the south. So, we've won? It seems so, your majesty. I don't think the grandees have much fight left in them. All that's left is mopping up. Sickness spreads in the coast. Your esteemed highness, a terrible sickness is spreading among my troops in the coast. What can we do about it? If we let the disease run its course, we'll have lost a lot of soldiers we can't afford to lose. That's why I did this event last. But I'm not sure how much we can do. Perhaps the council can see a way forward. You can either send medical doctors from Quail University, hire a wizard to cure the coastal troops with a magic... 
quarantine the disease in order for the healthy to leave them behind or do nothing to stop the spreading of the sickness. Let thy will be known. Not your men. All right, looks like we are, I think that's perfectly reasonable, spending to save our soldiers, our wonderful soldiers in green. Doctor, under her to treat this sickness, your majesty. It's a simple remedy. Garlic, wormwood, and spleen of goat. Oh, and we mustn't forget leeches. <laughs> Lots of leeches. Of course, gathering enough ingredients to treat a whole army doesn't come cheap. At great expense, you send the best doctors from Quail University out to the coast to cure your troops. Hopefully they're worth the money. 60%. The doctors get the work done with their leeches and bizarre concoctions. Some of your soldiers die. Some survive. All in all, though, it appears to be working. You still lose plenty of troops, of course, and at a time when you can least afford to. But after a few weeks, the sickness is defeated. Sheesh. <clears throat> Doesn't everyone butter sandwiches squints in American? Grilled cheese, yes. Well, hey. Let's see here. Uh-oh. It's, it's the Great Butter Rebellions <laughs> from the South. <laughs> Far to the north, an ancient ceremony in a smoky clan hall reaches a fever pitch. Selby, the chief's claimant, sits atop a throne of bones surrounded by godspeakers chanting in a forgotten tongue. And thus, with Morgana as my witness, I hereby crown you the monarch in the north, the Lord Rinder, soon to be monarch of all the kingdom. Glory to the Lord Rinder, chosen of Veltor. Glory to Morgana and the north. The assembled chiefs roar in chorus with each other. Steins are smashed against one another in celebration. Now we must bring down the false queen in the south and fulfill the prophecy. The only question is how. So, you can either lure the queen to the north and sacrifice her in a pagan ritual, lower own defiance, or sacrifice thousands of goats to the old gods and call upon them to intervene. Goal, raise own farming. What's it going to be, Haya? What is your scheme? You've successfully held the grandees at bay, but now how are you going to try to win the game? He's going to lower his own defiance. Okay. Lure the queen to the north and sacrifice her in a pagan ritual. So it is destined, so it will be. Spread the word to all Morgana's children. The throne breaker has risen, and the false queen will fall. Sorcha. But first we drink, in honor of the gods. More cheers are up throughout the clan hall. Come morning, there will be a lot of work to do. For the final stage of their scheme, the chiefs must keep their defiance at one or less for one full season. Yike! Okay. And auction time. Let's get this underway. Oh, God. Hopefully it's tax season. <laughs> I'm trying to think, what can I do to prevent getting prophesied again? <sighs> tax season, or I need some sort of event. Alright. 35 seconds. Get your buildings that you need. I see the military that the patricians would want. Oh, there's also a military down for the patricians if other factions were so inclined. <laughs> yeah, Solid Yindors is broke. It is all on you, Jim. <laughs> Five seconds. A nothing burger of an auction? Ooh, time's up. Alright. What made it in? The Fortress, raising military. Any new to the Rebellion report? The Loyalists are winning the Rebellion. The re Rebels are crumbling. Okay. The War's End. <clears throat> the Rebel Army has crumbled. I've ordered a massive push into their lands, looting and pillaging the whole way. As we speak, Your Majesty, our armies are laying siege to Grandiva Mur's fortress. 
It sounds suspiciously like we've won. All that remains are the formalities of victory, your majesty. Victory. Marshal's... The marshal rides back out to oversee the siege. A few days later, you receive word that Grandy of Amur's castle has fallen. And just like that, the rebellion is over. Soon, the armies of the patricians and chiefs are paraded throughout the city, waving their banners and showing off their loot. Meanwhile, Grandy of Amur, leader of the rebellion, is brought to you in chains. Common folk crowd into the palace to watch the trial. Kill me if you like, but the Ninth God knows that I... That what I did was righteous. Let's see. Um. Hmm. Not putting butter on bread is degeneracy. Ooh. Playing it bold. Let's see here. That said, we're going to put this traitor in the dungeon. Stiff-backed and silent, Grandee Vemur is dragged to your oubliette. He is thrown into the darkness to reflect on his treachery. And just like that, the South is defeated. Oh, shit. Defiance went down. No, I'm going to get prophesied again. <laughs> well, not prophesied, but well, yes, prophesied, but the other way. Oh, good Lord. Grandy Vimur has been imprisoned. Vimur II joins the council. And defiance goes down everywhere. Shit. All right. As you sit, resplendent.